listening to The Dating Den with dating and relationship badass and best-selling author Marnie Batista. Every week, you'll get the raw truth from top experts and real people on the important dating, sex, and relationship issues you want to know about. So if you're ready for true talk that's authentic and unfiltered, and you're not afraid to be called out on your <clears throat> stuff, then you're ready for what's next. The Dating Den, episode 100 with Debbie Rossman. How to literally get over your broken heart. Welcome, ladies, into the dating den. I'm so excited today um, because here's what I've been really thinking about. And I know that this is really um, on your heart. No pun intended. And you'll hear why in a minute. But what I'm really noticing out there is that you all are really doing a lot of great things to manage your stress and your anxiety and you're going to yoga and you're meditating and you're journaling and you're doing your gratitudes in the morning. And that's so amazing. But what I also know is that you still are stressed and you're still not having the results that you want in your life. And when I got turned on to Debbie Roseman and heart math, I thought, well, let's get her in the den because not only is she the CEO of heart math, but she is a high achieving, really with it, super powerful woman, just like us. And not only does she talk about heart math from the intellectual point of view, but it really actually helped her create changes in her own life. So before I do your whole full on bio, Debbie, welcome into the dating den. Well, thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here. I, I love it. So let me tell you guys all about uh, Debbie. So she is a PhD, and she is the president and CEO of HeartMath. Um, she's a behavioral psychologist. She's an educator. She's an author. She really does the HeartMath way well by going around and speaking and teaching uh, all over the world, really. What she's teaching is how heart rate variability coherence training, and we're going to hear what that is in a minute, can accelerate your health your well-being, and goal achievement, which I know that you are all about, ladies. Um, she has written a dozen books. She's co-authored with Doc Childra, the Transforming Book Series, published by New Harbinger, which you probably want to check out. They're called Transforming Stress, Transforming Anger. We all need that. Transforming Anxiety and Transforming Depression. She also co-authored the Heart Math Brain Fitness Program and Heart Intelligence Connecting with the Intuitive Guidance of the Heart. And we are going to learn all about what heart math does and their scientifically validated technologies and their research to help you reduce stress, create flow, and have the life that you really love. So welcome again into the den. Well, again, thank you so much. Um, I'm eager to share what I think can really help people who are struggling with these things and yet want to get ahead in life. So ask your questions. I will. Well, so first of all, you know, I was listening to an interview with you and the first thing that you were talking about, which I was like, Oh my gosh, she was our people. She is our people. You were telling a story about how, you know, you were going, you're doing your meditations in the morning and then you're going to work and like being all stressed out. And then you were going to yoga in the evening and you were on this little, this hamster wheel. And I just was wondering if you could kind of just share what, you know, what was going on for you? Was it working? Was it working a little? And like, what caused you to want to go deeper? Well, I didn't know there was anything else. I thought I was doing everything that I was aware that you could do in terms of eating healthy, had good friendships, had a wonderful job that was really helping the world. And at the same time, we were growing very fast in our job, and I didn't have any skills for addressing the anxieties or the overcares or the challenges that would come up during the day, except to meditate in the morning, do yoga, then in, after work, try to meditate again, even do a little bit at lunch, right after lunch. And I was a very committed meditator, so then do retreats here and there. But there was still something like three steps forward, two back. Something was draining my energy because from nine to 12 and then one to five, it's still, even as a behavioral psychologist, I just knew so many skills 
but the challenges and everything speeding up was just more than I could manage as far as the stress levels. And then I had a challenge in the relationship and that just added to it. So at some point, you know, I think all of us hit these periods in our life. This wasn't the first time for me. I just had to go for a walk in the woods and say, what on earth? Uh, there's got to be more to life than this treadmill. There's got to be something new. You know, the relationship where I fell in love when I was young, 19 years old, and thought I'd never find anybody like that again. Well, I hadn't. I had relationships, but so that was still underneath going like, why not? And then my job and my work, as much as it was helping the world, it was still like, there's got to be something more fulfilling than just constant growth, even if you're helping others. So I knew something was missing, and that's what I think most people feel. Either it's pushed down and pushed away, or it's boiling up. But you take that walk in the woods and you go, what else is there? And at that point in my life, and it doesn't just happen instantaneously, I was really open to searching or to receiving, I guess that's the word, some new direction that really would feel right. Because I'd been through a lot of processes and meditations and personal growth and development. I was looking for that something different and that truly happened when I met HeartMath founder, Doc Childress, was before HeartMath, and he started talking about accessing the intelligence of the heart, that it's really about love, but love not in some gushy, abstract, love has to hit the street, and you need tools to practice it during your day. And there's something in how he was talking about it that just spoke, and I, made, it, I just knew energetically that that was what I needed to look into. That, that's so amazing. And there's nothing frustrating as like feeling like you're working your tushy off on like being happy or being whole or whatever it is. And to then, you know, have that moment where you're like, you know, WTF, <laughs> I can't see what I can't see. And I love that you were open and then it just sort of came into your life. So tell everyone who does not yet know this, ladies, get ready. This is going to blow your mind because it's you're going to love it because it's science, but it's also heart, right? Which is what we're always about. So what is heart math and what's the partnership between the mind and, and the heart? Well, you know, as a behavioral psychologist, one of the things that I was studying is when I used to have people, uh, I used to do gestalt type therapy, and I used to have people pretend they were their mind or their head sitting on a pillow, talking to their heart on another pillow. And then I have them switch, physically switch places and sit on the heart pillow and be their heart talking to their head. And I have them go back and forth on one, one issue, one problem they wanted more clarity on or a solution to until the two came together. And it almost always was they were sitting on the heart pillow or they wanted to jump back on it when they had the insight. And so I, I knew the heart was something more than a blood pump, but I had no idea that it was really an access to our higher capacities that there was a way to connect with your heart that would open up not just wisdom, but some higher intelligence that you could keep getting downloads of instruction from. And that's the heart intelligence. That's what I really learned when I met Doc Children. And because I had that experience of Gestalt, uh, therapy that I uncovered and I discovered that for myself and it really worked when he talked about the intelligence of the heart I went oh I know what he's talking about so heart math is really researching and the research institute what's going on in the physiology when that happens why are the head or mind so separate from our feelings a lot in the heart and what's the emotional pulls versus the true intuitive feelings that make us feel we're really at one with the universe and on the right track. And so we set out to research that at HeartMath. And we looked at all sorts of biofeedback and physiology measurements and discovered heart rate variability, discovered that it was the beat to beat changes in our heart rate. They're not, heart rate's not like 70 beats a minute. Um, 
for every beat. It averages out to that if that's what your heart rate is. But it's changing every beat. And if you plot those changes, you see patterns that are either really smooth and harmonious or really jagged and irregular. And those patterns actually match how we feel, emotional state. So that was blow away to see that we could objectify what's going on inside of us through heart rate variability feedback. And that was the first time that had ever been discovered. Now heart rate variability is being used in a number of areas for recovery and overtraining. But we looked at how do you shift your heart rate variability pattern quickly from that jagged irregular waveform to a smooth harmonious waveform which shifts how you feel and perceive right in the next moment. And that was really powerful to help people make those changes in perception and attitude and behaviors that they couldn't pull off before. And so that's that's an introduction to heart math. So one thing that I found really interesting when I was you know looking into heart math and, and becoming more informed was that you call the heart, you know, the little brain in the heart. And that there is actually uh, their connections, right? That, like you said, it's not just pumping blood. It's not just, you know, there for the Pledge of Allegiance, right? It's, it's actually got some pathways and it's really connecting. So that's sort of like mind blowing to people, right? Because we're, we're not really taught that. It's not common knowledge. Um, so when, when you really are able to look at the power of that, what, what impact can it make once you start to know that that's really like a, is it a direct link? Is it like a secret bypass? Like, what? how do you look at it? That's a really good question. You know, so we talked about this heart rate variability pattern. Well, what's happening is that the little brain in the heart, which are 40,000 or more neurons that are sensory neurons, they can sense, feel, learn, and remember, just like the neurons in your head brain. And they're there to give information, to receive and send information about how the body feels. And they send that information from the heart to the brain through the vagal nerve. It's called afferent neural traffic, meaning it's going from heart upstairs to the brain. And we were always taught that the brain controls the heart, that it's all what's called efferent, meaning all the nerves, signals, and wires are going from brain to heart, telling the heart what to do. It's two-way. But when you really look at, so what is the traffic? What's the message that's going from heart back up to brain? And it is emotional state and it's hormonal state and it's all sorts of other information. The heart tells the brain four different ways that it's communicating through these sensory neurons. And that's quite amazing, including the blood pressure wave. That's one. But it's not just the blood pressure wave. It's this how the body feels and how you feel. And that is triggers the brain to say, oh, have I felt that way before? And it looks for pattern matches. And that triggers in the amygdala and other centers of the brain going into fight, flight, fright, or an anxiety habit, or let's go eat something to feel better because that makes me feel insecure. It's fascinating to look through that window. So when we then learn, okay, we can actually interact with our heart rate, our heart rhythm, and with this little brain in the heart, much easier than we can interact with our head brain. You know, there's lots of neurofeedback and people learn how to change their brain waves, which is very important, very powerful. But as you change your heart waves, you're changing their brain waves because the brain will synchronize to the heartbeat and the heartbeat rhythm. The heart is putting out the strongest rhythm, the strongest beat in the whole body. And so when it's saying, I'm out of sync, the body's out of sync, and it tells the brain that, and the brain goes into a stress reaction, the brain is actually desynchronizing because the heart is. Mm -hmm. And the heart rhythm becomes synchronized and harmonious. It entrains the alpha rhythms and the thalamus and the brain rhythms into more harmony. It says, oh, the body feels good. Now I can philosophize about life or I can be creative and innovative. So it's a direct pathway to what we really want. And it feels good when the two are in sync. That's when we have feelings like flow or we're in the pocket or I wish every day felt like this. And we feel like we have access to more of who we really are. 
I love that. You know, I always say, and you're just describing it, like why it's it's not a good strategy is that you can't think your way out of your thoughts, right? So if you're just focusing on, you know, changing the thoughts and you're not accessing the power of what's going on emotionally and through your heart, then you're just going to sort of be stuck, like you said, in that kind of like rationalizing to try and shift your thoughts. Is that kind of what you're saying? Uh, yes. And you can't, the mind doesn't have the power to change your emotions either. That's why we're seeing such an anxiety epidemic, even with cognitive behavioral therapy and a lot of approaches that are helpful. The emotional system can't keep up with all the stimulus information and all the speed up of energy and change going on today, the uncertainty. So it backfeeds, it, it, it backwashes on itself and people can't get a grip on it. And so you see these epidemics of anxiety and depression and you see us compensation for it when overeating and, and relationship problems. And then it turns into depression if it's not resolved. And we can interrupt, do a pattern interrupt of all of that once we learn how to reset our heart rhythms. It's like rebooting your computer or your operating system. That's so hopeful. And it's not about going back, you know, 20 years of psychoanalysis, what happened when right. I was. It's really resetting the system. And that's what we all want to do and be able to do right in the middle of the day when we something triggered or we got that email that we read and we flamed it back. And we went, oh, man, I wish I hadn't done that. And then we have to pick up the pieces, you know. We can stop all that, and that's when we get our heart and brain in sync. We have the foresight and an inner prompter that goes, yeah, let me wait. Let me not send that yet. Let me chill. Let me cool down. We want to have that intuitive guidance to have a more straight line to our fulfillment rather than have to have so much trip up. Right. And that's what heart intelligence provides. When you're describing that, you're talking about flow. This weird image came to my mind of, yeah, I used to watch Seinfeld. And it's like Elaine dancing, right? Like it was this like not right to the beat. It was like awkward. It wasn't in flow. It was just this like it wasn't it wasn't in rhythm, right? And what when you describe this, it just sounds I like the feeling I get in my body is this the like musical Right. Like this really beautiful, like concerto of synergy uh, between your head and your and your heart really in alignment for for, you know, I'll just call it your your highest good. So let me ask you this, because, you know, when I started thinking about this, you know, there's all this language around this heart intelligent, right? Like speak from your heart. Let's have a heart to heart. I was broken hearted. So like language is, is, you know, been around for a long time. Tell me about like, wh like, why is, why is that true? Like, have we always had a sense of knowing that something is coming from the heart or how did this sort of evolve? Because it, it sounds like it's never been more accurate. Yeah. You know, the heart in ancient China, in Greece, Aristotle, all of native cultures, they all said the heart was the center of the mind and that the heart was related to wisdom. And so it was only really until the scientific revolution in the mid 1500s that the mind and heart got cut off from each other. Like the, you only exist from the, the neck up and the rest is just walking around holding up your shoulders and your head. And that whole understanding of heart and the metaphors of the heart from before, which aren't metaphors, they really are true to go deep into your heart for the answer, or put your heart in it or play with your heart, sing from your heart. We all intuitively know and feel there's something like truthful to that. We don't say, I love you with all my head. We say right. my heart, you know, that always, yeah, common sense. So what is it? And it got lost, and now science is bringing it back, which is so essential given what's happening in the world. We really are all connected in the heart and honoring each other in the heart, respecting each other because we're all one there, even though we have different cultures, languages, races, religions, genders, our heads are different. Our hearts truly all experience kind of the same emotions. And as we align, as you said, 
the heart and mind, we begin to open to a bigger picture of what it's all about. Mm, I love that. Okay, so let's talk about how this applies to relationships. And I was uh, reading over your book, which, uh, ladies, you want to go in the show notes when we're done and get a copy of that. You can get it right to your inbox. And um, you you said something, uh, there's a, a quote, and I'm probably paraphrasing, but um, you may have found, as I did years ago, and this is you wrote this, that following what you thought was your heart got you into trouble. For example, you might have felt a tingling and your heart beating fast about dating a certain person, but it turned out to be a bad experience. Um, and you were talking about how we can easily confuse an emotional sensation for our heart's intuition. And I will tell you, my clients are asking me about this all the time. So how do you discern the difference? How can our listeners start to do that? It's a process for sure, but oftentimes it's the mind's ambition that we're confirming, saying, yes, I really, you know, this guy's going to be great. And, or it's a sexual attraction, which is not bad at all, but he may not really have the qualities you want for a long-term relationship. And we can get blinded by both of those. So listening to our hearts and learning to discern the difference between the signals of intuition and the signals of emotional pull or the signals of mind insecurity is the work. And so HeartMath has a whole set of techniques and tools called the HeartMath skill set that helps us do that. And one of the most beautiful tools is a technology called the M-Wave or the inner balance. We have two types that shows you when your heart rate variability is in this coherent mode and helps you get there. So once you get into heart rate variability coherence, you're in sync. Then if you begin to ask questions of yourself, you actually can see more what your subconscious is really feeling. You see more what's behind it and you feel more confirmed that you're in when your intuition speaks to you. So it's training yourself in that intuitive guidance. And it's a beautiful experience to keep unfolding that. Doesn't mean you'll be perfect, but it's all about increasing your ratios of knowing which is which. And that's part of the math of the heart. So it's and so as you do that and you have like a, a a piece of equipment, a small piece of equipment, right, that you can you can start to actually see the the heart rate variability, the the graph of that. Yes, and it's called the inner balance. You use it with your smartphone, um, Android or Google Play Store. Download the app for free, but you need to buy the sensor. Okay, buy the sensor, ladies. Okay, so so you you can look at it. Heartmath.com. You can get the sensor, or if you don't want to use your smartphone, either your iPhone or your uh, Android phone. It works on both of those. You can get the M-Wave, too, which is a handheld device that's independent of the phone. And it trains you. These are not just tracking your emotional state. They're training you how to shift, how to shift in that coherent state, how to shift how you feel on demand, how to actually discern what you're feeling and thinking from what is your really intuition. So it is called uh, Inner Balance. Because the more you find balance during your day, the more you have access to that clarity. And you can always reboot your operating system, reset using the inner balance technology or the M-Wave. It has a pulse sensor that clips to your earlobe. And then the device will translate heart rate into the beat to beat changes of heart rate variability and then look to see how much coherence is in the heart rhythm and encourage you to go from low coherence to medium to high and give you prompts and feedback for doing that and give you rewards for practice and notifications and there's guides in there so it really helps hold your hand but you got to actually Use it. You got to use it. I love. You know, it's like let's just you know technology is causing half the stress. Let's just make friends with it and use it for good rather rather than evil. So it's almost like I'm a huge believer like in the power of you know somatics and the embodiment and the whole physical connection. So what I hear you saying is like this this is so powerful. You can choose to use these strategies and these tools, and you start to then recognize how your body physically changes, how it feels, and you see it reflected in the the device. 
And so you start to be able to then do it more efficiently. Is, is it sort of like muscle memory? Like you do it and then it works and, and it becomes like a organic sort of skill? Over time, it does. That's right. And you, you then it changes choices you make, changes you how you perceive. It gives you more self-empowerment to be able to understand yourself and also develops what we call internal resonance between your heart and brain. And that's pretty important to know if you're going to be resonance with another person, a relationship, or if you're not, how to facilitate developing that resonance or recognizing that you don't want a closer relationship with that person, then it's really not going to benefit you. And so you want to be able to develop that within yourself. You have to first before you're going to be able to develop that with another person. So that's awesome. So as you sort of get familiar with these strategies, you can then actually start to practice that discernment of what is truly intuition in your heart or what is a pull of mind or emotion. Is that Did I state that right? Yep. And most people find that they start to feel benefits and start to get insights within it right away. Like first the aha, like, wow, I really can see what's going on inside and it's really confirming how I feel. Cool. Now what? And within four to six weeks is when most people see a complete state change. They just have a whole new view of world and life. But the effects that they're probably using it four or five minutes a day. I mean, we're not talking about hours. Right. I love it. Right. And it's like, you know, and if you look at what I love about this is it's just the most efficient way to actually be more connected to your most powerful asset, right? Like your heart and your brain and to, to be, because a client once said to me, Debbie, like what I want is to be in control of the controllables. And what I, what I'm hearing in this is like, this is kind of the the best and healthiest way to go about doing that. And yes, and I would add to that an accepting in peace that what I can't control because yes. uh, so many women are, are perfectionists, control freaks. If they can't control something, they feel insecure. You know, there's a lot of these habits that our society has inculcated in us, and especially if you're really goal-directed or you're a high achiever. So being able to just bring all that back down to your heart and start to get new perspectives and then start to make choices based upon them and see that changing your life in positive ways. You know, this is a perfect time of year, the new year time to we make New Year's resolutions and we don't usually follow through on them and we feel bad. This is really a tool and a technology to reset it's time for a reset and a new approach. And that's what happened with me when I started to work with what became HeartMath. And it's been a wonderful adventure ever since. It just resets your, your path and your map. And you're resetting it for yourself, not following someone else. So I really, really offer this to the people listening to this as a way to really have a wonderful next year and start with the new year with a reset within and let your own heart guide you. I love this. And the last thing I want to just talk about quickly before we end is this, and you and I were chatting about it before, uh, before you walked in the den. And that is, you know, there's a lot of listeners that they get so they're like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm fine alone. I'm good being alone. And I think there's this um, very big gap between alone and lonely. And you were telling me, um, some of the data, you know, around the negative effects of loneliness, not only do you not get to share your life with someone, right. And have like someone to like cuddle at night and share sunsets with and, and hold your hair when you throw up, but it actually is debilitating to your, to your health. Do you want to tell the listeners what, what you kind of told me when we were talking before we, uh, we walked in the den? Sure. Well, I would guess that most people listening to this are people who want to have a relationship. There's many people who actually really are fulfilled, but have friendships, close circles, yeah. even if they live alone. But that is critical for health. 
And so loneliness, whether you're in a relationship and lonely or whether you are living alone and just don't have social support, is a huge risk factor for cardiovascular disease, heart disease. And it is, research has found it's more of a risk factor than lack of exercise, a terrible diet, and smoking all combined together. So it's pretty profound what happens when our heart feels shut down and we feel lonely or brokenhearted. It truly is that that's going on in our physical heart. As yeah, well. I love that. And you said, I wrote it down because I thought it was so powerful. You said, you know, this isn't just something nice to do. It's critical for your health and attracting the right person because you're open hearted and your heart is open, <laughs> right? Like you're healthy and your heart is open. Your heart's been shut down. This heart mask skill set can start to help you safely reopen it. Life is about living from the heart. That's where we're fulfilled. You can live from your head, but you'll keep banging it against a wall and wondering why you're not happy. And so we need to get the heart and the head aligned and the mind really aligned with the heart's intelligence of what's best for you and the wholeness. I love that. And I'm all about wholehearted living. I'm all about getting into your body. And so I am so grateful to hear all about heart math. And I, for one, I'm going to totally uh, get that little, I'm going to start checking it out, Debbie. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to start looking at what's what's going on. We are creating a, and what's happening is it's unfolding an ad heart movement, ad heart to your day. We have a program called the ad heart facilitator, which is the technology. It's online. You buy it and you get, we ship the technology, but you get authorized to, to learn and share heart math with others. And then we have, Coaches and mentors and consultants and health professionals get certified. And, you know, it's just expanding. It's growing because the heart's magnetic and that's what people are yearning for. So thank you so much for being able to share about this. You are so welcome. And you use the magic word at Dating with Dignity. The heart is magnetic. And if you want to be magnetic, then you got to do what Debbie says. And, <laughs> and by the way, ladies, don't forget when you're out there, date with some damn dignity and we'll see you next time in the dating den. Bye-bye for now. Hey, thanks for tuning into today's show. So if being in an intimate relationship in which you feel a hundred percent seen, heard and accepted by a high caliber man is a priority for you right now. And you're interested in seeing if you're a fit for working with me and my team at dating with dignity. Here's what I want you to do. Just head over to DWDVIP. That's D as in dating, W, D as in dating, VIP.com and book a call to speak with my team. We'll get on the phone with you for about 60 minutes and you'll get crystal clear on what's stopping you from finding true love right now. We'll also take a look at what you want to create, what you want your whole life to look like when you're able to finally be fully expressed as a woman in a healthy relationship with an incredible guy. And if we can help you get from where you are right now to where you want to be, we will show you the fastest path possible that makes sense for you to do that. We help smart, successful women all over the world solve this one missing piece in their life so they can finally have it all. So to see if we can help you do the same thing, head over to DWDVIP.com. I'm Marnie Batista, and let's talk soon.